great to have you with us again today as we continue our Picture This series. And today is a, a kind of funny because throughout this COVID pandemic, we've heard time and time again, the church isn't a building. The church isn't a building. We don't have to go to a building to have church. And of course, there is a, a level of truth and accuracy in that. But today, in our fifth picture of the church, it is that the church is a building. So let's see what the Bible has to say. Ephesians chapter 2, and we'll begin reading with verse 20. You are like a building with the apostles and the prophets as the foundation and with Christ as the most important stone. Christ is the one who holds the building together and makes it grow into a holy temple for the Lord. And you are part of that building Christ has built as a place for God's own spirit to live. So it turns out the church is a building. It's just not a physical building. It's a, a building that is alive. Let's go over to 1 Peter chapter 2 and let's see what the Bible says about that church that is alive. Chapter 2 and beginning with verse 4, 1 Peter. Come to Christ Jesus. He is the living stone that people have rejected, but which God has chosen and highly honored. And now you are living stones that are being used to build a spiritual house. We are living stones. God's church is a building. It is a spiritual house. The church is a temple. That's in the Bible. The church is a house in the Bible too. But, but maybe the largest word, the most inclusive word, is simply to say the church is a building. The church is a building. Now, in ancient times, the most expensive and the largest buildings in the world were temples. And all the people knew that. You may have noticed that in this picture, this series, we have gone to the book of Ephesians several times because there is no book in the Bible that speaks more clearly about the nature of the church than the book of Ephesians. So how about a little background about the church at Ephesus? Of all of the places that Paul ministered, he ministered in Ephesus more than any other city. Three years, three years Paul was in Ephesus ministering to the people. He knew a lot about temples and a lot about buildings because Ephesus was a major city, a major city. It was the capital of Asia Minor. It was one of the three major cities, Rome, Alexandria in Egypt, and Ephesus. I had the opportunity almost exactly two years ago to go to Ephesus, which is in modern day Turkey, to see for myself this ancient city. At Ephesus was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, the Temple of Diana, or in the Greek, it's called the Temple of Artemis. So the Romans called it Temple of Diana, the Greeks called it the Temple of Artemis. Same, same place. It was one of the seven wonders of the world. So here Paul is talking to the people in Ephesus and talking about a temple, a building. They know exactly what he's talking about. In their city is one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. In their city is a very, very famous temple, the Temple of Diana, the Temple of Artemis. In fact, an, an entire cult of Artemis existed around that temple. Part of what upset people so much about Paul's ministry was that he was speaking to people and helping them to come to Christ, and that was actually messing up the people who, like, were the silversmiths, who did, made all these idols. They were not happy with Paul at all, because Paul was there really making trouble for them. In fact, Paul got kicked out of Ephesus. So when Paul talks about the church is a building, that people know exactly what he's talking about. They understand perfectly it's, it's God's place, it's, it's God's house. And of course, all of the people with the Jewish background understood because the temple in Jerusalem was the place 
the place of God's dwelling. So Paul's audience, whether Gentile or Jew, understood clearly what he meant when he said the temple, the, the house of God, the building. They could relate to this idea of the church as a building. It made sense to them, and it needs to make sense to us. It's not a physical building, though it's important to have a physical building to house a church. But the church is a spiritual building. A spiritual building. And the church has a firm foundation. The church is built on a firm foundation. It all begins with Jesus. He is the cornerstone. He's the cornerstone. He sets the foundation so that everything about the building is correct. I have built church buildings in my ministry. Uh, I have been a part of the whole process from the beginning of purchase land all the way to multiple building projects. And so I understand the first thing you do is you gotta lay that, that, that cornerstone, that foundation stone. Jesus is the cornerstone. He, he's the most important stone. Everything about the building aligns with Jesus. The church is about Jesus. The church is about the foundation of Jesus. We have this fantastic foundation upon which to build God's house because Jesus sets the foundation. The church is founded upon then the, the apostles and prophets. That's what the scriptures tell us. That's what, that's what we read here in the Bible, that it's all founded upon the apostles and prophets. But it's important to understand this. Go to 2 Corinthians and we look at chapter 4 and, and verse 5. We are not preaching about ourselves. Our message is that Jesus Christ is Lord. We're not preaching about ourselves. So when the Bible says that you are like a building with the apostles and prophets as the foundation and Christ as the, as the most important stone, as the cornerstone, let's be clear. The Bible is not saying that the apostles and prophets mean anything of themselves. It's simply that our message is that Jesus Christ is Lord. The message, the message is Jesus. So the whole foundation is built upon Jesus. The church is built upon the foundation of Jesus as Lord, or as I like to say, Jesus as leader. Jesus is the leader. It's a more understandable term to most people. Jesus is our leader. That's why we're called Christ followers. Also, I think a better term than Christian, because Christian just gets watered down and people say, well, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. What is, are you a follower of Jesus? The church is about people who follow the leader. So those who follow the leader are Christ followers, and those who follow the leader are the church. That is what the church is all about. We are a temple where the presence of God fills the house. The glory of God fills the house. God's presence is there where two or more are gathered in my name. What name? The name of Jesus. Where two or more are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. So the church is the place where the foundation is Jesus, the message is Jesus is the leader, the people who are in the church are followers of Jesus, and the presence of Jesus fills the building, the house that is the church. The church is a spiritual home. It's not just a house, it's a home. It's a place where people can come to know to know the Father, to know the Son, to become children of God. The church is that building, that alive building, that, that temple, that place 
is the place that God has designed. He's designed it. There can be no such thing, and hear me, friends, as a Christian, that is not part of a church. It just doesn't work. You, you can't be in God's family if you're not a part of his building. If you're not there with others, the living stones that build the building. So it's so vital and important. Some of you may be watching this message or listening to this message. And, and basically what you do is you listen to my messages and maybe you listen to some other a pastor's messages on various broadcasts, and, and, and that's your church experience. And I just want to say to you, friends, listen, that's, that's not enough. You, you've got to be uh, one of the stones that builds the building. And if you're out here, if you're out there, you're not one of the stones that's building the building. We've got to build the building. Again, I have built buildings. I watched my, a build, building be built brick after brick after brick after brick. And I watched them lay the brick over days and weeks and months. You know, large, takes a long time. Just brick by brick. You're a brick. You're a brick. I'm a brick. You're a brick. We're all the living bricks, the living stones that God is using to build his house, his building that has Jesus as the foundation. The message of Jesus is the leader, that we are his followers. That's, that's what the church is about, built on Jesus. And the church is alive and growing. The church is alive and growing. It's alive because it's being built with living stones. The church isn't dead, the church is alive. It's alive. The church building is alive because it's alive with people that are living. And living, living, living stone after living stone after living stone. And the spiritual building is not only alive, it's growing. In other words, the church is not done being built. It's continuing to be built. The, the church building needs to grow, it needs to develop, it needs to continue to be constructed. In fact, if a church is not growing, something's wrong. Something's wrong. And of course, statistics tell us that the majority of churches aren't growing. And that is a major concern because the church should be growing. It should be growing in three ways. First of all, the church should be growing uh, numerically. In other words, quantitatively. It should be growing quantitatively. There should be more people coming into the church, people getting saved, transferring out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. More followers of Jesus. More people making Jesus their leader. Instead of being led by the enemy, they're, they're being led by Jesus. That's what happens in a healthy church. A healthy church grows. Anything that's healthy grows. Show me something that's not growing in the natural world, and I'll show you something that's not healthy. When a church is healthy, it will grow. Numerically, second way the church is to grow uh, qu say qualitatively, in other words, quantitatively numbers, qualitatively, in other words, spiritual maturity. People are growing in their relationship with Christ. They're becoming more and more fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ. They're not just followers of Christ. They're devoted followers of Christ. They're not just devoted followers of Christ. They're fully devoted followers of Christ. They're moving in that path, in that direction. People are maturing. There's a maturation process. There's spiritual growth happening. Now, what does that mean? Does it mean people are learning more about the Bible and learning more about Jesus? Well, obviously that's the first step, but it's not the, not the only step. Not only do we need to know, but we need to do. We need to put it into practice. 
It isn't about attending Bible studies and reading books. It's about attending Bible studies to know more about the Bible, reading books to get a greater understanding of the Christian life, that we might what? Put it into practice. Become better followers of Jesus. That Jesus would be more the Lord of our life, the leader of our lives. We would follow his leadership in our life. So when the church is growing, people are maturing. People are getting saved, and then they're growing in their walk with Christ. And no one ever stops growing. No matter how many years you've been following Jesus. As I said last week, our goal is perfection. We're moving in the direction of completeness, of wholeness, and we're moving there. We may ne- we'll never get there, but we should be moving. The trajectory of a believer should be like this, growing, growing, growing. So that's the second kind, but there's a third kind of growth, and that's organic growth. Growth from within, which is that people are now beginning to rise up to take leadership, that they're identifying their gifts, their spiritual gifts, and they're saying, I want to be used by God to help lead his church. So some of that is people taking positions of leadership over various ministries. Some of that is people actually coming out of the church and actually going to start other churches or to be missionaries or to evangelize or to do other kinds of ministry in the the prisons, in the jails, wherever it might be. In a healthy, growing church that is alive, more and more people are coming to Christ and the church is getting bigger. More and more people are drawing closer to Christ and following the leader. And more and more people are stepping up to the challenge of what does it mean to use their gifts in leadership and in ministry. That's a holistic understanding of what it looks like for a church to really be growing. All three are very important. All three are very important because All three represent and reflect what it means for the church to be alive, to be alive. You know, sometimes you'll hear people say, you know, that's a dead church, that's a dead church. And and what they mean is no one's getting saved. The church isn't growing. People are stuck. They're plateaued spiritually. They, they've been to all these Bible studies. They've heard all these sermons, but they're not putting it into practice. They're not more godly. They're not more godly. They are not more godly. In other words, they're sinning just as much as they used to sin. There should be less and less and less sin in the life of a growing believer. Amen? Less and less sin. More and more godliness. Less sin, more godliness. And when people say a church is dead, it's because no one's, you know, the same people are doing all the work, all the ministry. It's the same people. It isn't, it isn't growing. There aren't more people involved. There aren't more people being sent out. It's just uh, the same thing. That's a church that's not alive. God doesn't want that kind of church. That's not what the church is supposed to be. This series, Picture This, is about a picture of the church God wants. The church God says in his word is supposed to be. And that is a church that is alive. That is a church that is growing. You know, sometimes people say things like, well, is bigger really better? And and here's my answer. Yes, yes, bigger is better. Bigger is better. I pastored a church. I founded a church. I pastored it when it was small. I pastored it when it was big. And bigger is better. Just take it from somebody who's seen it. Bigger is better because you can do more because you can reach more people, because you can have a greater impact. But not only that, bigger is better because what bigger means is the church is alive. The church is growing. The church is doing what it's supposed to do. So we should pray for and seek growth. But of course, really what we are seeking is health because we know if we're healthy, then the church will grow numerically, the church will grow organically, the church will grow in spiritual maturity. All those things will happen if the church is healthy, if the church is doing what? Okay, foundation is Jesus, everything comes back to Jesus. The message is Jesus as leader. Everyone in the church is following the leader. They're doing their best to be a fully devoted follower of Jesus. Everyone is telling people 
who don't know Christ about Jesus. So evangelism is happening. The Great Commission is being fulfilled. People are coming to Christ. People are getting saved. And when all this is happening, the church is growing. The church is alive. The Holy Spirit is at work. The Spirit is drawing people to Jesus. The Spirit is convicting people of sin. The Spirit is giving people power that they might be witnesses. The Spirit is working miracles. People are being healed. Things are happening, signs and wonders. All these things are what are evident when a church is alive. When a church is healthy, when a church is growing, then all these things are taking place. And this is what the building, the church is a building, an alive building, following Jesus and doing the things that Jesus has called us to do. So worship, the praise and worship time is powerful. It is anointed. People are worshiping in spirit and in truth. People are opening up their hearts to the Lord and they're saying, what is it that you want to say to me today, Jesus? They're, they're, they're giving praise to the Lord for all of his goodness and his blessings and his faithfulness. The worship times are dynamic, dynamic. There is discipleship happening, growth spiritually. People are in small groups, they're attending classes, they're learning what a biblical marriage looks like. They're understanding what it means to minister to the youth and to the children. People are devoted to that. There's resources dedicated to that happening. People are excited about ministry. There's outreach into the community, compassion ministry. The, those who are homeless are, are receiving food and clothing. There is outreach to those that need help. The church is showing the love of Jesus in real and practical ways. These things are happening. And when these things are happening, it's evident that the church is alive and the church is a force for good and the church is moving. And this building, this alive building, these living stones are building something that is a beautiful temple. The people that Paul was speaking to in Ephesians, they could see every day this one of the seven wonders of the world. Here is this incredible temple, the Temple of Diana. And they could get, they could get the message very clear. We're supposed to be a beautiful, awesome, incredible temple of God. I've had the opportunity to, to travel and see some of the great churches in all the world. I've been to St. Peter's, the largest church there is in, in Rome. I, I've been to uh, Westminster Chapel in London. I've been to the Domo in, in, in Milan. I, I've been to St. Paul's in New York City. I, I mean, I've been to some of the massive buildings and they're super impressive. And every one of those, by the way, that I've gone to, there are people who are not Christians that are almost like tourists. They're just there to look at the architecture. When Paul was speaking and writing, what he is saying to us is, you see how impressive these buildings are and people are drawn to them because of the impressive nature? The church should be that impressive. The church, the alive church should be that impressive. It is a building that is alive. The people in the community, the people in the world should look at the church and say, that's a church. That's a good church. They're good for our community. They're, they're making a difference, a positive difference in our community. That's what the vision should be of a church. Everybody is on a spiritual journey. So we welcome people in that are seeking, that are just trying to find out more about Christianity. Some have come to accept Christ, but they're new believers. And so their lives can be a bit messy and, and, and they need people to come alongside of them and help them to understand what it means to, to live a, a God-honoring life. That some of their previous uh, behaviors and patterns of living need to be changed. And, but we're, we're, we're willing to walk with them because we understand that this is 
what it's like, just like a natural baby makes a lot of messes and you got to clean up after these babies. But, you know, they grow up and, and they get bigger. And then we say to those that are maturing in various ways, we want to just encourage you to keep maturing, to keep growing, to, to, to keep getting closer to Jesus, to have less sin in your life and more righteousness, to keep living a life that's more and more God honoring and more pleasing to God. Now, when all these things are happening, and when you've got leaders that are leading the church well, that are casting vision and are, are motivating and inspiring people to pursue what it means to fulfill God's vision for, for, for a church, you've got something very positive. You've got something that is alive, that is growing, that is healthy, that is on a solid foundation, and that kind of church is exactly the church God wants for us. Let's pursue it in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Lord, help us to be the building you want us to be, alive and growing. Help us to make sure our foundation is always solidly on you, Jesus, as our leader, that we follow your word and use us to be this incredible beacon of light in our world, in our community, so that people will see the good that is being done and people will understand the impact that the church can have when it is a living building, when it is a beautiful temple that shows your love and your grace in this world. And I pray that in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.